All right, last week, Twitter owner Elon Musk promoted a series of tweets showing that throughout the 2020 presidential campaign, Twitter executives routinely collided uh, with the, uh, colluded rather, I should say, with the Biden campaign staff to remove tweets the campaign flagged. Well, in October of 2020, during the height of the presidential election cycle, Twitter executives struggled with how to handle a bombshell story from the New York Post about sensitive information on a laptop belonging to President Biden's adult son, Hunter. Well, eventually, Twitter took steps to block the Post story from its platform, a move that former Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey has since labeled a mistake. Now, this was a, an enormous effort by a major communications platform to influence the outcome of the 2020 presidential election. Now, we can't know what influence these actions actually had, but last Friday's news drop did confirm the suspicions of many about both Twitter and the Biden campaign. And uh, we're going to talk with uh, Congressman Chip Roy in just a moment. He's running late uh, from the Hill. But I'm gonna, while we're waiting for Congressman Chip Roy to join us, I'm going to go to Travis Weber to get the latest on the marriage bill and the lame duck session of Congress. Uh, Travis, welcome back to Washington Watch. Thank you, Tony. All right, we're still anticipating a vote tomorrow afternoon on the uh, so-called Respect for Marriage Act in the House Pass the Senate, goes back to the House for the House to con, uh, confer with them on the uh, amendments and agree to those amendments. So what's, what, what is the latest yeah. that we're hearing? So, um, Tony, we continue to make sure that um, it is beyond doubt clear in the minds of the members of Congress and all who are engaged in this debate and discussion that this bill has religious freedom problems. Uh, I do think this message is starting to break through today. Uh, uh, Representative Mario diaz Bellart put out a statement saying that uh, he sees how this bill is deficient on religious liberty, articulating why he will be opposing the bill. Uh, this is a sign that the message is um, resonating and members understand that this is just unacceptable. They cannot support it and uh, it is deficient on religious liberty. So we're just helping members understand this and other reasons. Obviously, we have concerns about the bill itself and its policy of what it's trying to do to distort marriage. But uh, as we uh, continue to engage with our friends on the Hill, uh, we're looking at a vote likely tomorrow could be um, in the days, you know, could get pushed, pushed to the next day. But, uh, Tony, it looks like it's on schedule, uh, at least for now, um, for tomorrow afternoon. Yeah, and uh, we're going to be joined here just a moment by Congressman Chip Roy, who actually has taken an amendment very similar to the amendment that uh, Senator Mike Lee had addressing these religious liberty uh, issues, which shows the deficiency because every Republican voted for Mike Lee's amendment, showing that they realize there's a problem when it comes to religious freedom. Right. If they supported Mike Lee's amendment as they did, why would you support the bill when Mike Lee's amendment failed to get enough votes to pass, failed to make it into the bill? The, the, the need for Senator Lee's amendment is, is so clear in terms of the number of entities it would protect who needed protection, as we've seen in all the litigation post Obergefell. So if you recognize that and you recognize the text you're voting on as part of the final bill does not protect those people, then you can't have it both ways. You have to decide either they need protection or you're going to stand up and say, well, actually, they don't need protection. And fortunately, a lot of leaders try to have it both ways and uh, supported the amendment, but not the bill in final passage. All right, Travis Weber, thanks so much for, uh, for joining us.